From our Media One Center studio at number three, Mama Street, Brookfields in Freetown, it's a warm welcome to the national news. I am Yesi Ernest Hallowell. First, I'll bring you the headlines. Human Rights Defenders Network calls on statistics Sierra Leone to ensure that all data generated during the midterm population and housing census must be captured in the final results. Statistics will have challenges. There is no way we can shy away from that. There are huge logistical operational challenges. Sierra Leone School Green Club, with support from the European Union, celebrates World Environment Day. And the theme of this day, of this celebration this year, is only one Earth. The Chief Executive, National Public Procurement Authority, Ibrahim Bremaswari, has described the training of procurement officers on e-procurement systems as a major reform in public procurement landscape. It's a new software that we've developed. When we came in, in 2018 specifically, we decided to let the people of Sierra Leone know exactly what we spent for the year and how procurement processes and procedures are done within the year. And in sports, former national cricket player and under-19 national cricket team coach, George Kapunde has been laid to rest. Today, one of the members, they returned to God, Usai Komot. He was created by God and they returned to God. Those were the headlines. Welcome back. Those were the headlines and now for the news in details. The Human Rights Defenders Network, Sierra Leone, has in a press conference called on Statistics Sierra Leone to ensure that all that are generated during the midterm population and housing census must be captured in the final result and, where possible, create opportunity for Sierra Leoneans who have not been documented to have the chance to do so. Here's a story. As part of its mandate, Statistics Sierra Leone announced the provisional findings from the just concluded midterm census which was done as part of a process to clarify some errors made during the 2015 census. Since the announcement of these provisional figures, many concerns, both for and against, have been raised on different fora. The Human Rights Defenders Network, Sierra Leone, is not an exception to that. But on the contrary to many concerns raised, they believed Statistics Sierra Leone did a marvelous job and the findings were not a shock to them, taking into consideration how members of opposition parties asked their party loyalists not to be counted. Statistics will have challenges. There is no way we can shy away from that. There are huge logistical operational challenges. One, even the tablets did not come on time. The preparation of, of, of the enumerators had huge challenges. If it resulted in the tax or even the payment of the enumerators, and that even affected the, the, the overall sense of the indices that uh, some people even in Twitter here were not counted. Although salaries were known uh, extended you know, the time for people to be counted, yet we are still getting reports of people not being counted. But I believe what largely contributed to what our figures were now acquiring is because of the politicization of the whole exercise. And it's very, very unfortunate. You know, we look at, it's unfortunate that in Africa, the opposition opposes everything under the sun. In Sierra Leone here now, everything we look at in terms of political ends is either red or green. It's unfortunate for this country. Census is not only about elections. It goes beyond election. I was on radio. I made a voice message telling the citizens that it's the right, you have the fundamental right to be counted. Because it provides government the requisite reliable data. In a press statement put out by the Human Rights Defenders Network, Sierra Leone, the network observed that in the run up to the commencement of the census, there were incidents of some political parties instructing their members not to take part in the census process, adding that they are with the conviction that every person in the country has the right to participate and be counted, irrespective of their political affiliation, sex, tribe, religion, or place of origin. We observe that since His Excellency the President, 
retired Dr. Gidas Madabio made a proclamation of a midterm population and housing census to be conducted by Statistics Radio, there have been reported concerns by members of the public with regards to the purpose, intent, and relevance of the midterm population and housing census, despite the public education and strategic engagements made by Statistics Radio clarifying the purpose, intent, and relevance. With all these worrisome happenings in recent times, what could be the way forward? The Human Rights Defenders Network Sierra Leone asked for the following actions to be taken. We call on all Sierra Leoneans to translate the National Pledge into active practice as we approach the general elections in 2023, particularly before, during and after elections. The network therefore calls for the following actions. One, the government engage all stakeholders to discuss the outcome and implementation of the midterm population and housing census. Two, statistics value to ensure that all data generated during the midterm population and housing census must be captured in the final results and where possible create opportunity for serial union who have not been documented to have the chance to do so. Three, we urge political parties and their leadership to fully respect the national symbols of the country and particularly the national pledge. The Human Rights Defenders Network Sierra Leone is a coalition of civil society organizations and individuals working to promote and protect human rights with specific focus on defending human rights defenders. For Star TV News in Freetown, Hassan Koroma reporting. The Sierra Leone School Green Club, with support from the European Union, have celebrated World Environment Day by organizing a poetry and art competition for eight schools with Kelly Rural Vocational School clinching the first position as the school was credited by the five top-notch judges visualizing the most impressive environment messages. Alfie tells us more. When making a statement during the school competition, the European Union Head of Cooperation, Richard Hutler, noted that this year marks the 50th year in which the world is celebrating our environment, adding that supporting environmental worthy causes is part of the EU's Green Deal. Since 1972, we are celebrating now 50 years already of World Environment Day. And the theme of this day, of this celebration this year, is only one Earth. And I think it was already recognized in the beginning of the movie and also uh, when, when you give your, your, your presentations and your artwork that we only have one Earth and we really need to protect it. So that's why we're all together here to celebrate it. And that's why I'm also I'm standing here from the European Union because we want to protect our environment, we want to work against uh, climate change we call it in the European Union the Green Deal, where we want to build a better, a better world. We want to build a better world not only in Europe, but we also want to be really that it's one world. And that's why we're supporting environmental protection and the fight against climate change in the whole world. A programs manager of the Green Club, Daniel Conte, stated that protecting our environment is humanity's single biggest agenda, emphasizing the need for prompt climate action policies to mitigate the impacts, which requires massive stakeholders' collaboration. It can be passed on to the wider community. These kids are coming from homes, teaching them about environmental issues and how to address them. We go a long way in helping to solve the problems of climate change and environmental issues. One of the ways we involve these kids is for them to express themselves artistically and otherwise. We've been planting trees with these kids. We've been teaching them life skills, how to adapt to climate change in their various communities. Today, with funding from the European Union, we are about to witness yet another demonstration from these kids, which is an art competition. This art competition is a way of raising awareness, and it is a way of involving youths 
This is a way of showcasing what they want to see happening in their environment so that our governments will take prompt action to save the future for these kids. You'll be having some artwork and poetry, which these kids have done for you. And uh, the artwork and poetry they've done is about environmental issues. What are these issues? What are the impacts in their lives? And what are the possible solutions? The acting chief director at the Ministry of Environment, Edward Bendu, stated that the EU's multilateral indicative program is apt in supporting environmental issues, commending all the participants for the impressive breadth of knowledge on the environment. We are in cooperation for this support to our environmental activists, the Green Club. Uh, indeed, the European Union is one such uh, organization that has helped to promote environmental management and environmental protection in this country. You had the head of cooperation mentioning the support they have given to government for the Western Area Peninsula Forest National Park. And uh, the Utamba Academy National Park in the north there. And uh, several other projects. How was the uh, operational program estimate for the... Uh, how was the impress administrator for the operational program estimate when the, uh, when the uh, environment protection agency was established? OPU 1, Operational Program Estimate 1, and Operational Program Estimate 2. So huge amounts of dollars, millions of dollars, have been spent by, have been spent by the European Union to support Sierra Leone, protect its environment. And uh, coming down the line on to 2022, they have a standard, they are coming up with a multilateral indicative program. The competition was climaxed with Kelly Rural Vocational School clinching the first position with the top three winners supplied artistic materials. For Star News in Freetown, Alfred Barry reporting. The Chief Executive National Public Procurement Authority, Ibrahim Bremaswari, has described the training of procurement officers on e-procurement systems at the National Public Procurement Authority as a major reform in public procurement landscape that will capacitate staff through the avoidance of human engagement in dealing with public procurement processes. He spoke to Abdul Rahman Kamara in this interview on the importance of the training as well as the introduction of e-procurement systems, which he says will help in expenditure analysis and government policy formulation. Here's the story. I'm here today because it's a new software that we've developed. When we came in, in 2018 specifically, we decided to let the people of Sierra Leone know exactly what we spent for the year and how procurement processes and procedures are done within the year. That is when we launched this 2018 assessment report and it was tabled in the well of parliament and uh, we are expecting that people, Sierra Leoneans, can read to know exactly how much was spent on procurement across Sierra Leone. And, uh, we continue, this is 2019, we did the same. This is more detailed than 2018. And uh, it is still expected that Swellinians can go in and see that they do comparisons on the 2018 and 2019 and see what 2020 brings. But now getting to 2020 going forward, we thought it fit because we've been saying to the people of Swellinians that electronic government procurement is key to see how we can minimize excesses in our country. We thought it fits that. Launching 2020, 2021 and going forward, every data collection should be electronic. And the software has been developed by the institution. Kudos to the Directorate of Electronic Government Procurement. This software we have developed by the Directorate of Electronic Government Procurement at the MPPA to see when we're going to collect data now on the assessment report. One, it will, as you see, it enhance all the, the MDAs in question. All the MDAs are in here. So if we go to collect data to do our assessment report, it will, it will go from one MDA to another. Two, it will stop staff that are going out to take wrong data. Three, you will not sit in your house and say, I'm in McKinney. So every area that you are will be captured in this data. So I cannot sit at home 
I'm supposed to collect data in Kailan and fill in any figure. The um, inbuilt software that we have today, that we've started training our staff with, it gives you the opportunity as a supervisor to know exactly where your staff is, what it's doing, and if the data that they are collecting for you are, are correct. We've been grumbling as a nation year in, year out. And if every policy boils down to goods, works, and services, then it's, it's of importance that every year these goods, works, and services where we're spending our monies is being given back to the people so we can know exactly how much was spent on goods, works, and services across the country. That will give government a, a clear picture how they will collate, the, how they will collate them and how they can formulate policies as we go along. Say, for instance, if you dive into our, our assessment report, you see clearly how much was spent in the western area, north, south, east. And if you dive detail, you'll be able to see clearly what was spent on goods, what was spent on work, what was spent on services. And if you dive detail too, you see the, the MDAs that are spending the highest money in our country. So it's giving us platform, not just for M MPPA and government, but even in the for estates to see exactly how public funds are spent, to see exactly how we can manage our resources. Because if we see exactly how public funds are spent, we can say, okay, we saw you did a lot of things here, why can't you move this other way? It will aid all of us as a nation to have policies being formulated that will move our country forward, to capture every spend analysis that we've done for the year. Every spend analysis, as long as it's on procurement. Say for instance, the 2020 spend analysis, Will be captured by this one 2021 as, as the case may be so now you not only have it on paper but you have correct data that can be used not just by Australians but across the globe it will interest you to know that even the world bank the imf and other institutions are key in getting these data because you want investors to come to your country you want foreign direct investment to come to your country some of the things they are looking for are data to know exactly what, what are your spend analysis as a nation. Where do you spend? Where can we come in to ensure we can aid that country? So spend analysis as a nation is very, very key, and there's no way PA staff are getting this training because they are the ambassadors that are going outside to do this assessment report. So we, we are above 100 in this institution, and the tabs that you see, we bought 50, and that 50 is our starting point show you top users of national competitive bidding, how much RFQs, requests for quotations were used in that year, how many procurement activities we are done, how much was spent on just procurement in our country, yeah, so it, it, it will even drill down telling you how much was spent in the western area, how much was spent in the north, how much was spent in the east, like this. You know how much was spent on goods, how much was spent on works and how much of spends on services. The Jagaban Movement, a philanthropic organization established to support the needy and the vulnerable, as part of its continued support to relief assistance, has donated food items and cash to disabled people and the task force of the All People's Party at the party secretariat Brookfields in Freetown. Hasanatu Kamara tells us more. A cross section of the disabled wing, because of the good Goodness, we he don't bless you with because of what he don't do for me. Uh, we all, as a disabled wing, we ready for open hand to ram, ready for embrace them and cooperate with them as a family. Making the donation on behalf of the national leadership of the movement and its founder and leader, Sheikh Omudu Kamara, the national coordinator Jagaban movement, Sullivan Kalon said. As a movement, they are aware of the constraints faced especially by the grassroots membership of the party, given the current economic hardship, noting that they as a movement saw the need to reach out to them as a show of support and solidarity. I know that thing will come in, we will see something, all of the gas comes up to the kid family now. So they send me with two baggers and plus us money, so the tax force. They say, tell them thank you, and they did a very great job now, they say, let's continue and keep the spirit. It's not just the beginning. 
we introduce ourselves to Oman, to Oman, no, we do more. At the time, we go for interact, we go for do more. Yeah. So if you can, in short, we yeah, like a short presentation to Oman. From we on boss, we are Mohamed, Omodou Kamara, alias Jagaban. Yeah. Santigi Bangura, foundly called Pa Santos, head of the APC task force, commended the membership of the movement, noting their efforts to reach out especially to the needy and vulnerable, which shared gesture he said is no surprise to them, and expressed thanks and appreciation on behalf of the task force. May God help me. May God make this movement to move all the cans form so can we all the can form and now. And it's our meeting and now we said they join the line. They not say well, why you need, they say why you not come. So me, it means tax us to left this this cause what you are going to tell us. Then we go every year we wait for Una Messi. I tell you all thing. The cheer lady for the disabled wing of the party expressed thanks and appreciation to the Jagaban movement, describing its leader, Shek Omudu Kamara, as a philanthropist that cut across all facets of society irrespective of party and religion, describing the donation as timely, especially at Shek Trine times, while calling on others to emulate the good example of the Jagaban movement. She described the disabled wing of the party as critical components within the party, but noted some challenges its membership faced that requires the support of others. The name Jagaban, not only the name to be in a real is because obviously we self, we don't meet her in person. We don't wait to we talk with her. Although, what about politics, it be in talk with her. But now that, just like when we brought her, when at the coordinator, he say anything gets stage. Some policy work in one for kind of politics. You know, we just don't want to, they can't fool our with me in our political meetings. And, you know, starting stages today, we do say where they can show face. So, we want for appreciate, we want for tell them plenty thank you on behalf of farm. And we pray that we don't know waiting at the intention. This is politics. One man can play your own game, he can try your own best. I believe, say, politics, anything at this world, any side, we, we go on direct to say, go this way, maybe now one, I know that I say, but he come into politics. So, to they give open hands, you know, no waste and position, you want to take care of the Jagaban movement since its establishment has provided support to both vulnerable groups as well as community in need of support through the rehabilitation of mosques and schools and the provision of water kiosks and solar lights in different communities in the western area. The founder and president of Jagaban movement, Sheikh Mohammed Omudu Kamara says, it's an act of goodwill and the desire to help fellow human beings that seek to solve social problems lending their support to worthy causes by providing financial and material aid. For Star News, compiled by Abdurrahman Kamara, read in the studio by Hassanatu Kamara. Well, viewers, if you've just joined us, this is the national news on Star Television, Channel 21. The Ministry of Housing, under the Student Union leadership at Forabe College, in collaboration with Don Bosco Fambo, has celebrated World Climate Day by planting 500 trees within the present of the campus. Here's a story. As the call for climate smart policy becomes louder by the day, preserving our environment is not just a mere policy expose. Our lives depend on it and the lives of our unborn. This three planting exercise drive, according to Don Bosco's Eco Project Coordinator, Mori Masakoi, is part of their broader drive in collaborating with requisite bodies to rid our environments of pollutants. And how we arrived at this partnership. So the Moscow family for over 20 years we've been known as a child protection organization. We've impacted the lives of many children in this country. So two years ago we made a decision to, to make the paradigm shift to something new. So we made a decision to move to the environmental sector. Why? Because environmental issues are becoming very topical and they are becoming very serious. But at the same time, we, we speak about them mutantly. We give the environment small attention, which is that itself a danger to all of us. 
So we made a decision to move into environment because we observed that uh, there are huge environmental impacts that are happening as a result of our activities as humans and our negligence as a society. The Minister of Housing, Suleiman Alim Bangura, stressed the importance of trees in having a convivial environment, citing the need for the trees to be given much needed attention in order for them to flourish for the beneficiation of all. Senior, as a ministry, our mandate is to ensure that hostel residents of Rabi College students do have the best of facilities. And we are also there to provide the necessary things that they need on campus. And also to ensure that the atmospheric atmosphere of this campus be a conducive, a convivial, and a very peaceful one for learning purposes. And that has been the key reason for us to collaborate with Don Bosco Fambul to plant over 500 trees here today on campus. This particular strive cannot be a success if you, the students that are residing here on campus, fails to complement our efforts. You are the one that are residing on campus. On that note, it implies that we also have a duty to play in order for this particular plantation lifespan to last longer. There are certain acts that you suppose by all possible means to desist from. There are certain acts also that you should try by all possible means to implement. By you doing that, it is obvious. At the end of the day, we are going to achieve the said aim that we are yearning for. We are craving on your indulgences. Try by all possible means, abstain from things that will, at the end of the day will serve as an arm to this particular community. The Student Union President Adam Asila noted that it is crucial that FBC campus becomes environmentally tranquil. As she noted that, it is one of the oldest campuses in sub-Saharan Africa. She however lashed at the brazen pace at which the campus has been subject to massive environmental degradation, emphasizing the need for increased awareness on matters of the environment. So Bay College, these are some of the things we have been looking forward to. Because as part of our plans when we assume office is to see first of all how we can raise awareness amongst the student populace of the importance of preserving our campus. Bay College is the oldest university in sub-Saharan Africa. So therefore, it must continue to stand out as being one of the most admirable colleges across Africa. But over the years, we have been faced with lots and lots of challenges, one of which is deforestation. Another is encroachment by community members. Um, early this year, the college administration actually started a project of which I'm, I'm part of. We, uh, we collaborated with the Ministry of Land and also Ministry of um, Agriculture to see how they can reclaim some of the encroached lands around um, the vicinity of Farabay College. For Star TV News in Freetown, Alfred Barry on the news. Viewers, now to round up the national news, let's see what's happening in sport. Former national cricket player and under-19 national cricket team coach George Pakunde has been laid to rest. He died after a short illness at the age of 52.
George Tambapunde, former national cricket player and also the national under-19 cricket team head coach, has been laid to rest at the Kintom Cemetery at the age of 52 years. George Tambapunde was a patriot who served the Arslav for over a decade and also represented Sierra Leone in so many international competition across Africa. Many describe him as a legend who has impacted the knowledge of cricket into young players who have passed through his training. George Tambapunde, in his active day of playing, he was an open batsman for the Sierra Leone cricket national team, the Patriots, and also an all-rounder, which means he can bat, bowl, and field. He will be remembered for his massive contribution towards the growth and development of cricket in Sierra Leone. Officials, past and active players have this to say in the remembrance of the late legend. In Alila wa ina ila irajun, we came from God and to God with the return. So today, one of the members, they return to God, Usai Komot. He was created by God and they returned to God. George Punde served the Sierra Leone Cricket Association as a player and as a coach. He was appointed head coach of the Sierra Leone Under-19 men's cricket team from 2016 till in demise. He also served the Sierra Leone National men's cricket team for over a decade. Now he completes all rounder in the bowl, part, and field. Um, in loss, not only day to the family, but a day as well to this Sierra Leone Cricket Association and Sierra Leone as a country. Because when you lost somebody, where they give to the game, when cricket win, na the, na the nation win. So we lost one of the personnel where they contribute to cricket development and loss to the country. So this now waiting I can tell about George Punde. Um, um George Punde we got the late Morocco League US today. Now be a colleague player and a very senior member of the Seattle National Team. And then um, I played with George over a period of ten years and I learned so much from him because George will be the then I'll be the senior people and we will come meet we will come to the team as young guys. And George be the, in South Side be the bat, I'll be an open batsman. And then he be encouraged lots of women coming to the game for the very first time. To make a lot of deal with confidence and a lot of play well. So George really don't put today my mentor and as somebody love the game from the bottom of the heart. And as somebody, if today we say me a technical director at the sport, George now wants me to win campaign behind me and support me today through the election and I'll be match for being the technical director of the Sierra Leone Cricket Association. Um, this is a very, very big loss to the entire cricket family. And before George did die, George did not be the head coach for the under-19. And the under-19 are like a baby to George. And George be left a message say, do let them take care of the under-19 team. Because he personally took care of that team there as if and inborn the boys then. So a very big loss for me and for the cricket as a whole. But firstly, I, I get to know George for a very little while young because I'm not this person to the family. There you go. Till today, he told me self start for coming to the game of cricket. Um, I start for playing with George from 2004. I was the first club in the National League. I'm open, but I'm a very good cricketer. I'm a somebody who is like. When you know I'm for the very first time, you feel like there's somebody really difficult to deal with. Deal with. But that's what you encourage people to learn. They quit for bags, they quit for forget. Of course, you only get person I act. When you offend them, the moment they tell you she do her wrong, they will accept you. It's a big loss, really. Um, as you say, um, cricket, cricket has some kind of a special game. We not to just anybody normal can just grab and play. Uh, we have to go through the rudiments and just like those other sports. And uh, so like um, like George, for George, he don't go through the rudiments from when he's young and hail from King Tom, go up, um, play at the highest level. And at one time was um, the highest one score in an ICC competition for Salona. Yes, it's it's a big thing because if you don't go in now into coaching and 
it they meant on the young boys and uh, you said um no say it was part of the under 19 team we um he pushed them to to, uh, to, uh, to a level and qualify, go to the, and, uh, the next stage, push, 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 although they're not being making at the final stage. But um, um, what can I tell you, the young boys then began to respect for her and no say it was really a gem in cricket. Yeah, that's okay. My way, quick for vex, but and, um, quick for comeback in the sense like. Be vex next five minutes. You know, to all make party back, you know. Why you can I bring me can to cricket, you know? Um I play, play ball. But it go to me with people them. Tell them say this boy get talent. But that's not I say it's okay. I said not for play cricket at all. I said a ball a leg. Even 2002 I start my cricket career. On the same team. We have traveled. I know I'm not going for play cricket. I know we don't miss my man. I was saying, miss my man. I was saying, Papa, you for play cricket. You, you play cricket. You don't play cricket. I beat you. I say, hey, Tuki, I don't want to play cricket. I say, the president that be Boyri George. You know, George, I mean, I be, I be, I be father to me in cricket. You know, because and um, they give me advice. You know, and um, even way they call me to the national team, we I be open. So he tell me, say, say, I mean, see, I know, see, you're aggressive. See, so play the ball to say the reach. You know, then I tell us, I say, yes, I say, you're right, right, you're right. I say, I listen because I want for land. And um, they like to say, if I be a, a, a superstar in cricket, you know, just continue to mess the you know, and make cricket career. Because they give me advice in and out of the field, you know. Um, so, only, so only if I never creeps everywhere for me, I say, Papa, you can play cricket, you know. Sometimes people will say that is inevitable, which all souls must taste. May the soul of our faithful departed brother continue to rest in perfect peace. For Star Sports in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. May the soul of George Bakunde rest in peace. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in today's edition of the national news on Star Television Channel 21. I am Yessi Ernest Hallowell. Many thanks for watching.